You hear him? I hear him. You hear him? I hear him. Hi. Dana and I are here in the woodlands behind our neighborhood, and we're taking the dog out for a walk. And that incredible enveloping sound you hear all around us are the 17-year periodical cicadas, also known as Brood 10 or Brood X. And it's last week of May, a little late this year, but they just started emerging three or four days ago. We started noticing a lot of them around, and now they've begun coursing calling for mates. They are truly incredible. When their emergence is complete, there will be billions of these insects. Their numbers should double over the next week or so as they finish their emergence. Look at them all up there. Look at them all an evidence of the hatch just before they emerge. This 17-year periodical cicada lives most of its life underground. After they are hatched as eggs, they drop off the tree branches and burrow into the ground for the next 16 years and 11 months. Uh, and that's where they live. They feed mainly on the roots, the fluids in the roots of deciduous trees. When they surface and emerge, you'll begin to start finding little holes about a month before they emerge. They dig up through the ground, and we were finding them tunneling up and living under logs and finding their nymphs under logs and stuff for about a month before they finally came out and shed their nymph form and molted into adults. Now, they leave behind all these nymph shells here when they hatch. This is their, I believe, their sixth molt. They molt five times as nymphs. They begin about the size of a ant, a small ant when they hatch, and they grow into this half inch long nymph, molting five times during their period underground. And their, their hatching is incredible. I've caught this one and brought him inside and put him in a jar so we could see what happens when they hatch. Now, when they start hatching, they split down the back of their shell and force their way out through their thorax. Once that happens, they hang backwards for quite a while. 
and then they curl forward and grab the top of their shell that they've left attached to the branch or the tree they climbed and pull their abdomen out. From there, they try to climb up and away from the ground and predators, and then they'll fill their wings with fluid and take on their true adult form. That whole period of hatching took about an hour and a half, and the, the nymph remained white in its adult form overnight for several hours until the next morning when we came down and found it taking on its adult coloration, its adult black coloration with the bugging red eyes, what you typically recognize as a cicada. Their shells coat the vegetation after they hatch, and they coat the vegetation as well in their adult form. It's said that these billions of insect emerge can emerge at such a rate that there can actually be a million and a half of these bugs per acre where their populations are high. And that's part of their survival strategy. Hang on, Dana's waving at me down here. What are you waving about? I'm waving at you, come up here. Why? Louder up here. Oh, yeah. That's why I was waving at you like this. Yeah, uh, we're, we're walking down the path. The trees are on either side of the path now. It's even louder. I couldn't even hear you down there, what you were saying. That's why I was going, come here. Oh, only 50, 60 yards away. I couldn't hear. But anyway, yeah, they emerge in huge numbers. A million insects per acre. A million and a half insects per acre where the habitat isn't disturbed, like here. And that's part of their survival strategy. These insects emerge in such numbers and the males emerge first, about a week ahead of the females. And they take the brunt of the predators. The, everything's eating. Foxes, raccoons, possums, uh, even vegetarian animals like uh, deer and squirrels and chipmunks have been observed eating these. Kia loves to eat them, but their strategy is to emerge in such huge numbers with the males coming first and taking the brunt of that, that by the time the females emerge a week later, the predators are satiated. They are full, can't eat for days. That gives the rest of the hatch time to emerge, climb, and get to the treetops in their flying form without being totally taken out by predators. Now, this strategy also helps the environment. What it'll do is it'll cause the predators to become so satiated that ground nesting birds and small animals that are nesting and reproducing in the spring suffer less predation themselves because the things that are eating them are just too full of cicadas. It helps wild turkey populations, it helps mice, the, it has had detrimental effects on some populations, like squirrels has been observed to reduce squirrel populations. These bugs are generally harmless. They can do mild damage to landscape bushes, and as I was saying earlier, they have, there is anecdotal evidence that they do have an impact on small species of rodents, like squirrels and chipmunks and such that depend on the mass crop. Because their entire purpose above ground here is to find a mate. When they mate, they die. But that's after the female lays her eggs. And what she'll do is she'll take her ovipositor and come along the new branches here of the trees, the small ones, and she'll put eggs along the stem of the branch, which will in turn kill the branch. After the eggs have hatched though, what happens is the eggs will hatch after a period of weeks, fall to the ground, bury down in to begin to cycle anew, where the nymphs will feed on the roots of the local trees in this area for another 16 years and 11 months or so. But that can ha impact species of rodent, like squirrels that depend on mass, because when they trim off the small new growth 
on big deciduous trees like oak, it lowers the mash crop for the area. These creatures only emerge every 17 years, and in areas where their hatch occurs and there's been development, you'll find significantly reduced numbers because if you disturb the top 18 inches of soil, like to build some houses, you kill off the entire batch of potatoes that's living in that ground, and it can literally take them five or six decades, a hundred years, to repopulate from these surrounding areas. Now, there are 12 distinct broods of 17-year cicadas, periodical cicadas, and there are four broods of 13-year cicadas that come out every 13 years, and they're distributed from the east coast into the Ohio Valley in different groups, and that is thought to be caused because the populations were disrupted by ice ages, where the ice ages ground out huge areas of earth and fragmented the groups, the original brood of cicadas, into groups. And what happened then is they don't all emerge at the same time. The 12 batches emerge at different years. And that's because the cicadas are adapted. Oh, one got on you. <laughs> in my head. <laughs> They're adapting to their environment as time goes by when they're underground, they can experience something called an, <laughs> an acceleration event. An acceleration event is where if conditions are favorable for five or six years while they're underground, they actually mature more quickly and come out four years early. That's called an acceleration event. And the, so the 17 year variety of cicada can emerge in 13 years with favorable conditions. Is there my ear. Here? Let's, let's take a look. my ear. Did you get them? I got him. He's swinging that way. Oh, he's <laughs> oh, I found him. Here. So this is your typical adult cicada. The males oh, are a little my. smaller than their female counterparts. Look at that. That's a lot of cicadas. A lot of my little teeny ones. Yeah, they're just... It's incredible. They're coating everything at this point. I mean, the trees, the tree trunks, even the grass on the side of the trail is just inundated with thousands upon thousands of these insects. It's incredible. And they're also starting to swarm because their entire reason for emergence is to mate. They spend four to six weeks above ground. The males make this incredible noise calling for mates. What? And then they crawled on my ear. So he might be on the film. <laughs> if he was stuck to my hair. <laughs> so while we're watching it, we're going to have to see if the cicada's crawling on my head. <laughs> that's, that's okay. I was just saying how we maybe bring a few home. I was just saying how people eat these things. No, I'm not eating them. No, they're not going no. on our recipes included list then? No. You sure? I'm positive. No, definitely not. Everybody. The, the cicadas, oh, they're actually related to no. the shrimp and crustacean family. No. No? No. You sure? I don't like shrimp. It's Maryland. We can put some no. old bay on them. No. All right, you know what? Well, you know what we can do. No. Nope. Fish like to eat them too. We can, they can feed the fish, and we can try to go catch some fish with them. We can try and do that. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe we'll use a few of these cicadas for bait in our next in one of our upcoming videos. <laughs> <laughs> Never know. Well, you ready to head on back? Yeah, it's getting hot out here. It's getting loud out here too. My, my bug spray is wearing off. Yeah, with this hot sunshine beating yeah. down that cloud in the sky, these things are are increasing their call volume. They like the hot, the heat, the humidity. Uh, if you get a storm or rain or comes through or it cools down, it cooled down a few days ago to into the 60s, and they just about went silent for a few days. But uh, now they'll be around for any number of weeks. Maybe we can go catch a few fish with some of them. Yeah, we can try. Okay, that might be fun. We can try. Okay, let's head back to the truck. All right. I'm sweating.
the bug spray is not working. Damn, that was really loud. That was really loud. It was like deafening. Oh, look, there's a uh, birdie over there. See him? 